curious. You came in here today offering what is less money, okay? Uh, and how, how did you think you would be successful? Well, can I take that? <laughs> we didn't come in here today offering less money. We came today to talk to the provinces and territories about investing more money into the Canadian healthcare system. Yeah, they don't see it. Well, uh, when they do the math, if they haven't done it already, what they'll see is that we propose that over the next five years, that we would increase spending in the uh, Canadian healthcare system by $25 billion. We also, we, we came forward with very significant investments in home care and mental health, $11 billion over 10 years, so a long-term amount of funding, so we can really make a difference around home care and mental health. So the answer is, we came forward with a real effort to make a difference for Canadians, and we were disappointed that the provinces decided not to accept it. I, I understand, but they've made the math, they've done the math, some of them actually done, have done this math. So. You know, they're going to go back to their provinces, and so do you figure that Canadians are going to blame the provinces, or are Canadians going to blame the federal government? What do you figure? Is that, does that matter to you? What ca Canadians want is for their leaders to work together to deliver uh, excellent uh, care, to make sure that Canadians are healthy and that they get health care. We are committed to making increased investments in health transfers over the next five years in the order of $25 billion. The, the health transfer is going to grow every single year for the next five years and, and beyond that. But the, the other really important piece that I'm frankly most disappointed about is that I've been hearing from Canadians across the country about how they would like the healthcare system to be transformed so that it can deliver in ways that it's not currently serving Canadians. People don't have access to home care, that only some 15% of Canadians have a good access to, to good quality palliative care, for example. We know that there's 500,000 kids on waiting lists right now to get mental health care. We came today to our meeting with an offer for an $11 billion in new money that would allow Canadians to get better access to home care and mental health care. We're really disappointed but that that the offer was not accepted. I, 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 I totally understand your disappointment, but it's, it falls very, very short of what they say they need to run the health care system. So I, well, can know, we examine it, that for a second? It just, I don't understand how it is that there is such a dissonance between what you offered them and how they're accepting it. By the way, they said you walked out of the meeting. Well, let's maybe let's peel that back. I mean, we came here uh, today with hopes that we could make a, uh, a real difference for Canadians. The, uh, the money that we offered to put on the table would make a, a significant difference. It's uh, significantly in excess of what the health care cost trend rate's been for the last five years, so we've offered significantly more than that. Uh, but most importantly, we've offered to make a real difference in uh, home care and mental health. And what I will tell you is we got here early this morning, we worked all the way through the day, and uh, we, at the very end of the day, uh, heard from the provinces that they did not want to go forward on these investments, these investments in Canadians' mental health and investments in home care for Canadians. So that is where we're at right now. I will tell you that the federal government remains committed to making investments in mental health, in home care, in trying to make our uh, health care system uh, even better in future. And uh, in that regard, uh, our resolve is, is strong. So you, you actually think that the Canadian health care system is that great, Dr. Philpott? You, you know, like I do, that there are people waiting for care in Canada all across the country. Um, Health care in Quebec in, in, in the emergency wards is at 150% capacity. Mm -hmm. right? These are not figures that I've invented. So it obviously there obviously is a problem, maybe even a crisis. I don't know if any of you have been in a hospital recently. Perhaps you have. I don't know if you have, but I have. I have been within the last two weeks, yes. And I have seen weeks, yes. people in hallways, mm -hmm. and there is no dignity in being sick in mm -hmm. Canada. So now, um, I, I kind of understand where the provinces are coming from. Well, I will tell you that Canadians are proud that we have a publicly funded health care system where Canadians get access to care based on their need for that care and not based on the ability of whether they can pay for it or not. But it's widely recognized well, it's that while... it's not based on their needs. I'm sorry, but Excuse it's not based on their needs. 
ministers. So what I'm saying is that Canadians will get access to the care because they need care, not because one person can pay more than another, and no Canadian has to worry about whether or not they will get care. Having said that, I will agree with you that there's, there's room to improve. In fact, we pay some of the highest costs in the world per capita for our health care system. And when you look at rankings of developed countries, we rank somewhere in the middle of the road. So it's widely acknowledged, and in fact, I think my counterparts would acknowledge that there's room for improvement. In fact, that room for improvement requires us to transform our system. So that's why one of the areas we're very interested in is investing in home care. One of the reasons that there are wait lists at hospitals, why emergency departments are crowded, is because of the fact that 15% of people occupying hospital beds don't need to be there. They could be cared for just as effectively and probably more happily at home or in the community. We need to help the system to move in the direction of offering more home and community care so that those people can in fact be cared for at home, that the people that are waiting to get into a hospital can get there. That's why we put five billion dollars on the table today as an offer to the provinces and territories to help transform their systems. But what it seems that you have succeeded in doing today is uniting the provinces, which I guess is a good thing, but that really wasn't the objective of the meeting today, it was not to unite them against the federal government, but was to find a solution for Canadians and fixing those problems in the health care system. So what Our must we give up now? Do you, your next budget is, is not going to include those $11.5 billion? Well, I'm, so I'm not in a position to talk about what's in our budget at this stage. What I can tell you is that we, um, we would like to make investments in home care and mental health that can make a real difference for Canadians. That is our ongoing objective. And uh, we also need to have a, a provincial and a territorial partner to deliver those services. You can't so do it without. That's, the, uh, that's the approach that we came uh, hoping to achieve today and uh, put, as I said, significantly more money on the table in order to do that. So, uh, of course, we're disappointed, but uh, we're going to keep at it and uh, ensure that we continue to focus on uh, ways that we can improve the healthcare system. So why not the first ministers? That's what they said. You put together the first ministers of the federal government for a climate. So if this is the number one priority for Canadians, I'm basing myself on polls, which we shouldn't really rely on too much after what happened in the States. But that's what we have. This is number one priority for Canadians. So climate was important enough to bring together the first ministers and the Prime Minister, and to make this a big push. So healthcare doesn't rank with, with climate, it's less important? Well, of course healthcare is critically important, and in fact, that's why the Premiers talked about it when they were together last week. They uh, asked us to come together, they asked the uh, health ministers and the finance ministers to come together to, uh, to seek a way that we can actually make a real difference. Uh, we listened to the premiers. The premiers mentioned to the prime minister that what they were seeking was long-term funding. Uh, we put that on the table today. Uh, we have talked. Uh, minister Philpot, over the course of the last 10 months, has talked to her colleagues across the country about the importance of home care and mental health with a great deal of consensus. And uh, in putting forward significant investments in those areas, we, uh, we were seriously hoping that we would get to a conclusion that could, could make an immediate difference. What we've seen today is a delay, a delay in that impact, and that's the reason we're disappointed. When's the next meeting? We have no scheduled next meeting. We uh, aspired to get to a conclusion today, and uh, really what we're going to do is think about how we can uh, work on behalf of Canadians moving forward. We came today prepared to collaborate. I think when it's a matter of health, it's very important that health ministers are there. I myself am a family doctor. I've seen health care from a whole range of perspectives as a, as a health care provider for over 30 years, as a health administrator, as a teacher of, of medicine, as a student of, of health policy. So when health ministers come together with that kind of perspective around the table, we want to make decisions about health. So I, th so I think that's why it was terrific that we had this meeting together with the finance ministers. I think we came to the uh, meeting today prepared to make a very substantial investment in new areas where the federal government has never uh, made investments before. Uh, frankly, we are disappointed that, um, that the uh, provinces and territories weren't able to accept it, but we remain committed to making sure Canadians will get access to better care, they will have better access to mental health, 
and to home care, and we look forward to making that happen. Thank you so much. Thank you.